All right. Let's get Clova out of there. Silver handrail. Sweet. Thanks for all that. Uh, what? There's something in here. Yeah, let's get it. That wasn't an accident. Ethanol. Well, nothing to do but get drunk. I wonder if this is why into sepsis. Oh, it says anhydrous anth ethanol. Oh. Anhydrous, is that different from the regular ethanol? Come on, that's common knowledge. Anhydrous ethanol is a powerful cleaner. You can even erase marks left by a permanent marker. Yeah, and not recommended for drinking, by the way. Well, I guess that's all there is. A whole bunch of steel lockers. They're not on the right, I'll have little red lights on them. Red lights, huh? Well, caring to give these babies a try. Yep, just as I thought. Locked tight, all nine of them. I wonder if there's anything important in there. Probably not, let's forget it. These lockers are a little larger than the ones up on top. Let's see if there's anything useful in here. Eh, no, nothing. It's a cardboard box. There's some papers and stuff in it. What's in the box? It looks like it's quite full. As far as I can tell, it's a bunch of notes about some kind of experiment. Some kind of experiments? Fuck. But it's all really technical and stuff. I don't really get it. This is a computer. The power isn't on. Oh, there is a power button. This is a waste of time. What? I don't see a power cable. Oop. Yeah, you're right. No power cable. This thing isn't even connected to a main computer, though. It's got a monitor, keyboard, mouse, but that's it. Just sticking the power cable in isn't going to do anything. Oh, I don't know about that. Huh? Could be networked. You never know what it's connected to. This is a keyhole. This looks like a keyhole for the activation key. Yep. Hands on the clock have stopped moving. Clock may stop, but time goes on. No time to screw around. I disagree. We need to figure a way out of here. Figure out a way up here. Whatever. Two levers here. You think they're... Activate something? Well, why don't you move one? Alright, I'll give it a try. Nope. It doesn't look like anything's happened. There's a lot of stuff here. I don't know how we could use any of these. Hmm. I can say for sure that I do know how to use at least one of these things. Which one? The one on top. I think it's a power cable. Power cable, huh? I'll take that. This is definitely a power cable. Do you remember if we ran into anything that didn't have power? As a matter of fact, I do. But let's look around. Looks like this door is the exit. The door on the right just goes to the laboratory. Nope. This door isn't going anywhere. No dice. Won't open. I mean, that's about as much as I expected. I don't think Zero would let us out of the room quite that easily. Looks like the control for an electronic door lock. There's a red light on this way. That means it's locked. We can get that light to turn green, and maybe we can get Clover back. Do we want to? Is this like an examination table? There's a creepy mannequin here, guys. I don't know what kind of table this is, but part of it's all black. There's a pin lying over here. I think someone probably used it to make the table black. Hmm. Well, if they only used the pin on the one part, there's probably something underneath all that pin. Clover, do you think you can erase it? Yeah, sure. Oh, this is a permanent marker. Shunpei, do you know how to erase ink from a permanent marker? Erase ink from a permanent marker, huh? Give me just a minute, Clover. I'll be right back. There you go. Part of the table's been colored over in black with permanent marker. If you could find something that could get rid of that ink. I can hand it over to Clover. Do the bars. Oh. I wonder what this is. This thing here looks like a voltmeter. And this is the control for that? Gosh, there's so many dials. Why don't you try turning one of them? Uh, nope. Nothing. There's no power here, guys. I turned the dial a whole bunch, but even if I did turn all the switches on, nothing happens. I wonder what they washed here. There are these weird yellow stains all over the sink. Ooh. I think this thing is a monitor for whatever experiment they are running there. There's a bunch of stuff on here, like the resistance value and voltage. The power's off, so there's nothing on it right now. Those are the stairs that just came down. The bars and the gate are just above me. Well, let's hand her the ethanol. Clever, use this ethanol. Should be able to wipe off that permanent ink with it. What am I gonna wipe with? Oh, well, your clothes, of course. Ha mm. <laughs> ha just kidding, just kidding. Please don't look at me like that. You're scaring me. These are hands, jeez. Window made a really thick glass. I don't even think a bullet could break it. Clever, can you use the cloth on the table? Uh, huh? Soak it in ethanol, then you use it to wash off all the stuff on the permanent marker, okay? 
Right, okay. So I gotta sew the cloth of ethanol. Yep. Oh, she got the cloth. It seems to be having a little trouble with the bottle of ethanol. She's ready. I should ask her to get to work on that stuff on the table. Alrighty. In the meantime... Let's try this. This monitor doesn't have a power cable. So, one of the cable needs to be connected to a monitor. The other needs to plug in under the desk. Alright, let's just slip you in. Huh? Oh shoot, I can't use this. What's wrong? The cable has three prongs, but the socket only has two holes. It's not gonna fit, is what I'm saying. In other words, we're gonna need a plug to change the power cable to one with two prongs. That's right. Well, let's see if Clover finished with the ethanol. So it's cloth and ethanol, and... Junpei, it's working! It's wiping the permanent ink off! Huh? There's some kind of weird drawing under the, all the permanent ink. What's the deal with that drawing Clover found? Maybe I should ask her to take uh, another look at the table. Let's... I wonder what this is. There are a bunch of numbers on some kind of grid. Can't see it from here. Clover, you got a pen and notebook, right? Could you write those numbers down and then hand them to me through the bars? Okay, Roger. Well, here, Junpei. I wrote down all the numbers from the desk on here. Maybe with numbers on it acquired. Boop. Is this Sudoku? Seven, eight, seven. I wonder. Um, is there anything else here? What's this? It's a rack. There are a bunch of cables on it. Somebody cut the outer stuff off the cables. You can see the wires inside. Something sticking out of the mannequin's head, like wires or something. What the hell are they doing in there? Huh? Why is she all quiet now? They're doing experiments on humans. Probably. Oh man, now she looks sad. Hey Clover, how are the power cables over there? Huh? What do you mean? Does a plug have three prongs or two? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Let me go look. Yeah, she does have to kind of crouch down to get a look under there. Cable in the monitor has, uh, it's got two of those little metal things. What does that mean? That's it. Can you unplug that cable and bring it over here? Uh, okay, but, but, well, I can unplug it, but it's connected to the main computer. I can't take it over to you. Damn it, that's no good then. Well, how about just a plug? What? The plug? Well, maybe more like a uh, connector. It's the sort of thing that makes a plug with three metal thingies and a plug with two metal thingies. Still useless? Not useless, not useless at all. That's just what we were looking for. Okay, can you hold on for a little bit? And back down she goes. Alrighty, unplugged. I'll hand it to you over at the bars, okay? I guess a drain is for water, huh? Well, there's nothing here. That was an a misclick, sorry. Here we go. Here you go. The two prong plug. Thanks. Boop. Okay. Put the two prong plug under the head of this power cable. And diggy done. Diggity done, son. Alright, I got the two pronged power cable in my hand. Pretty sure this will work. Under the desk I go. And let's just plug this thing into the monitor. Alright, that ought to do it. Alright, let's turn the power on. Uh, I don't think anything's going to happen. Why not? Well, it's not connected to the main computer. You never know until you try. Pretty optimistic. Junpei pushed the button on the front of the monitor. With a soft hum, it turned on. Streams of letters that made no sense to Junpei began to scroll across the screen. He had hoped it would turn on, but he hadn't expected this. Huh? It's actually working? So it would seem... Uh, isn't that kind of weird? What? Well, it's not connected to the main computer, right? It's just this keyboard and monitor. The only cable connected to this thing is the power cable we just plugged in. So why is it working? Maybe it's a wireless display. Clearly, this was a reasonable explanation to Lotus. Uh, wireless display? Yeah, it connects to your computer wirelessly. Hence the name. Have you been living in a cave, Junpei? He most certainly had not, but... Is that... Normal? Yes, at least where I worked. Huh? As they spoke, the lines of letters suddenly stopped and disappeared. The only thing left on the screen was the word pass, followed by a colon. Looks like we need to enter a password. Again. 
There must be a hint around here somewhere. Could you go take a look? Yeah, I'm on it. What are you going to do? I'll see if I can do something about this on my own. On your own? Yep, on my own. Lotus pulled over the nearest chair and dropped herself down onto it in front of the keyboard. Straight up hacking. For a second she stared at the screen. She kneaded her hands, knuckles popping, and twisted her back left and right. Nobody hacks like that. Alright, let's kick some ass. Let her smile to herself and rubbed her hands together in anticipation. Uh, what exactly is he looking at? Uh, then before Junpei had time to blink, she was typing at an incredible speed. The click clack of the keys running together like machine gun fire. Huh? What? Junpei was, for once, at a loss for words. Didn't expect that, did you? Of course I didn't. What kind of job do you have? What are you? I'm unemployed at the moment. I used to work for a cybersecurity firm, but I quit. Why? Lotus blinked. Huh? Oh, um, it's just something. She stopped typing for a moment, and her face fell. This is not an avenue of questioning to be pursued, Junpei realized, and quickly shut his mouth. Lotus fingers began to move again, and in a few seconds she was back up to speed. As she typed, two more letters... <coughs> More letters and symbols that meant nothing to Junpei began to pour across the screen. Uh, what are you doing now? I'm going to try and brute force it. Brute what? A brute force attack is... Well, the short version is I just attack the thing head on. The long version, without looking up or slowing down, she began to explain. A brute force attack is one of the simplest ways to break a cipher, she told him. It checks every possible combination until it finds the right one. For a complex cipher, it can take a very long time. The thought of doing something like that made Junpei feel tired, but Lotus explained that she was writing a program that would run just such an attack on its own. It's not the most elegant solution, certainly, but given the circumstances, there isn't much else I can do. Even as she talked, her fingers never slowed or missed a key. Junpei couldn't help but feel a little odd. Oh, but back up to what we were talking about earlier. What were we talking about? The wireless display. It's kind of a strange if you think about it, isn't it? Hmm? How do I put it? Well, let's say you write a program that calculates an addition problem for you all. Alright. For you, alright. So you enter 1 plus 1. This is going to show you 2. See? Isn't that strange? Uh, no, not really. Oh, come on now. Of course a gay man like you would think it's strange. You said so just a minute ago. Huh? You're just not getting it, are you? Who calculated 1 plus 1? The, uh, the main computer, right? You said it's connected to the monitor wirelessly. Yeah, but someone who grew up in a cave would know that, right? They'd probably think that this thing here, the monitor, is doing the calculating. And once they've decided that, they'll start examining this monitor. They might poke the screen or something. Ah, I see. The color changes when I press it here. Then they might investigate the hardware on the inside. Ah, I see. So this wire supplies power. Eventually, they might even cut the wires. Ah, yes, just as I expected. When this wire is cut, no results appear. Therefore, it must be this device which does the calculations. But the truth is that, just like you said, the computer is doing the calculating. But these gay people wouldn't know that, because they have no idea that the monitor and the computer are connected wirelessly. Lotus continued to type. Junpei scratched his head. So, uh, what are you trying to say? Nothing. Really. It's just, I thought maybe. What if the relationship between human beings and our brains is like that? Huh? Well, let's say you stick a bunch of electrodes into parts of the brain. A scientist in examining the signals they send out might say, Interesting, so stimulating this part of the brain causes this person to see colors. That must mean this neuron cluster controls that function. Okay, let's see what happens when I cut out this part. Ah, just what I thought. Cutting out this part causes that function to cease. Therefore, human thought processes must occur in the human brain. You get it? just like this monitor. Maybe the brain is just an output device, like this monitor. Maybe our thought processes actually occur somewhere else, in a main body. We just don't know it. We never even think about it. Just like those cave people wouldn't know about wireless communications. I can't imagine that there's some unknown medium that transfers information into our brains, where we experience that information as thoughts. That's horseshit, by the way. Junpei didn't say anything. Not so much because he had no retort. No, her argument just seemed silly, and it was a little surprised to be hearing something like it from someone like her. The brain is just an output device? Human thought actually occurs somewhere else? Did others really think that, he wondered? 
It was a little creepy, Junfei thought. It sounded altogether too much like a bizarre cultist religion. Cultish religion? Yeah! Maybe that's the cause of Seven's amnesia. Oblivious to Junpei's increasing discomfort, Alertus continued, Sweet! If memory is actually stored somewhere else, in some sort of main body, somewhere, maybe he hasn't forgotten anything at all. He's just having a difficult time accessing his memories because the monitor, his brain, has been damaged. I suppose that would explain aphasias and blindsight, too. Perhaps I actually can speak or see. The monitor just isn't functioning properly. Hmm. I guess people with pro prosopagnosia could be suffering from the same thing. That's the in inability to recognize faces. Uh, wait a minute. Pro pro what? He knew what aphasia was from watching medical dramas on TV, and blindsight was easy enough to guess. And he'd never heard the word prosopagnosia before. What? You never heard of prosopagnosia? Lotus spun around in her chair to look at him. Junpei just shrugged and shook his head. Nope. What is it? Well, put simply, it means a condition where the mind can't distinguish between human faces. In other words, my face would look the same as Clover's, or even yours. So they can't remember faces, which is how most people recognize each other. That means that people with prosopagnosia have trouble recognizing even people they're close to. Usually, they can make do by associating people with other things. Their voices, their clothes, their hair. Does that mean other people's faces look like... planks? No, no I don't think so. You've seen monkeys, like in a zoo, right? To you and me, all monkeys' faces look the same. Even though they're obviously got faces, it's almost impossible for a human to distinguish between them. The zoo staff that works on them would learn to identify different monkeys eventually, but you or I couldn't, unless one had a scar or something else to set it apart. That's how people... That's how people would seem to be someone processing the murder. Yep. Prosopagnosia, huh? Didn't even know that kind of thing existed. Junpei did his best to act as though the entire lecture hadn't gone entirely over his head. And, uh, what were we talking about? The idea that your brain is just an output device, like a monitor. Are you serious about that stuff? Not really. I was just kidding for about half of it. What about the other half? Well, I guess I was just adulting. Huh? Not funny. Uh, was that really adulting or did I misread it? Auditing? Lotus's smile had something rather masochistic to it. Something more than a story made up out of boredom. Don't take it seriously. It was the first thing that came to mind, and I just talked about it to kill time. But it looks like I don't need to talk anymore. Why? I don't have to kill time any longer. I like her hair. As she spoke, Lotus raised her right arm high and brought it down on the interkey. The program took only seconds to analyze the system. Chunks of text flickered on and off in quick succession, and then a line of numbers appeared, blinked, and disappeared. The screen cleared, and all that was left was the word accepted. Hmm? Piece of cake. Lotus would clearly have patted herself on the back, if it would not have made her look entirely ridiculous. After a few seconds, the accepted disappeared, to be replaced with... Boop. Nine squares, arranged in a three by three square. What the hell is that? No idea. Looks like a puzzle. Solved it. Suddenly, Lotus stood up. Huh? Aren't you gonna, I don't know, do more computer stuff? I can't do anymore. It won't let me do any more programming. See? The keyboard? Nothing. So, there's nothing more I can do. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll leave this to you then, Junpei. What? <laughs> let me take a break, alright? I did my part. Fair enough. He wasn't sure what to say to that. She certainly had done her part. In fact, without Lotus, they probably would have run completely aground. I shouldn't rely on other people so much, Junpei thought to himself. From here on out, he told himself, you'd rely on no one else. Junpei crossed his arms and stared at the puzzle shown on the screen. Done. Get that weak-ass shit out of here. Alright, I solved it. Did you hear a noise just now? Yeah, I did. It sounded like something unlocking. Where did it come from? I don't know. Look, Junpei. The lights on the lockers are green. Then you must have unlocked it with the computer puzzle. What's in here? Keys? There's more than one key in here. This one is small. It looks like it goes to some sort of machine. And this one has the Earth symbol on it. I think the Earth symbol matches a keyhole and a door on the A day. Well, if that's the case, we probably don't need the Earth key right now. Alright then, Earth key. 
I'll just take you away deep in my pocket. That's for the other key. You got it. It was just at that moment that he heard a voice behind him. It was Clover. Hey, Junbei, you have a minute? He put the puzzle aside for the moment and walked over to Clover. What's up, girl? I, um, I wanted to ask you something. Hmm? Junpei, you went to door five with my brother, right? Did you hear him say, like, anything weird? Why is she asking me this? Junpei wondered. The more he thought about it, however, the more it made sense. Snake had been gone for a long time. Clover was quite, quite attached to her brother. Of course, she would have worried about him. He thought back to when he'd gone through door 5, hoping he might remember something, even a small something, that would help her. However... Sorry, Clover. I can't really think of anything. I mean, he did mention that his hearing exceeds that of a regular person, or something like that, but that's about it. Okay. Clover's words are barely audible. She nodded vaguely to Junpei and turned to walk away. Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? Look, I don't know if I should ask you things, but if you don't mind, I was hoping you could tell me if, uh, Snake, I mean, was he born? You talking about his eyes? Yeah. No. He wasn't born blind. When he was a kid, he got in an accident. A really bad car accident. He couldn't see after that. And his arm. His arm? Yeah. My brother's left arm is, um, it's not like a normal person's arm. It's fake. It's not a real arm. The accident hurt him really bad. To save him, they... They had to cut off his arm. Yeah. He does move it, though. Is that all you wanted to ask me? Talking about her brother had clearly taken a great deal out of Clover. Junpei nodded. Look, I'm, I'm sorry for making you talk about all that painful stuff. Clover only shook her head and walked off down the stairs. Word up. This key. The shape sure makes it seem like it goes to this machine. Alright, I'm turning it on. Alright, Lotus, do more computer shit. It's full of letters. Well, it's showing some kind of warning. Power restored to experimental device. Emergency system will activate in the event of abnormal subject behavior. Okay. Tapping on this keyboard isn't doing squat. It says power restored to experimental device. Alright. Junpei? This thing in here is on now. Yeah, that's because we activated the power over on this side. Could you, like, play with it a little? Alright. Yeah. I'll turn this dial here. Turn, turn, turn. Uh, I don't think it's working. Nothing happened. Well, maybe she missed something. I should ask her to look around the room again. This is a monitor. There's a whole lot of cables under this table. It's a rack. There's some cables on top of the copper wire exposed. This mannequin lying on the exam table. Can't really see it very well from here, but it looks like there are a bunch of electrodes sticking out of its head. Got the scribblings from the table already. Drain for water. Hasn't been used in a long time, so it's completely dried up. It's a wash basin, more commonly known as a sink. Short flight of stairs. Maybe if you increase the voltage? Roger. Will do. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way to max voltage. That's safe. Max voltage, hey, wait, Clover! Oh, shit. Oh, what? Uh, I think, uh... Perfect. Oh, my God. The mannequin said. Oh, man. That sounds like a fire alarm. Yeah, what the hell? Fire detected, fire detected. The emergency system will be activated. Evacuate the room immediately, please. Whoa, you ain't gotta tell me twice. Damn, the gate's still shut. What about this door? Control device for the electronic door lock. The green light is on. Junpei, look at the light. Yeah, it's green. The emergency system has activated and disabled the lock. Now we can save Clover. Girl, Junpei. Come on, kid. Jump. She's safe. Oh, man. That smoke is some serious business. Time to close this door again, I think. Clover? Are you alright? Are you hurt? <laughs> Damn, she's coughing so hard she can't even talk. 
Uh, <coughs> of course I'm not alright. What the hell took you so long, you big jerk? I was almost dead. Sorry, I was going as fast as I could. You two can do this later. Right now we need to get the hell out of here. That fire's not going to stay in that room forever. Shit, you ain't gonna tell me twice. Owned. Later, boners! <laughs>